Hi, my name is Alexander Knopp and this is Introduction to Combinatorial Game Theory. In the previous videos we defined combinatorial games, we defined Sprague-Grandi functions, and we proved the Sprague-Grandi theorem about the sum of two combinatorial games. And in this final video we are going to give a surprising example of the application of this theorem. Recall that the Sprague-Grandi theorem says that if you have two graphs, g1 and g2, and their Sprague-Grandi functions are g1 and g2, then g defined as the XOR of g1 and g2 is a Sprague-Grandi function for g1 plus g2. Okay, let's consider a simple game. So there are two players. and several piles of chips. Players take turns and on each turn the current player splits a pile into two non-empty piles. The player that cannot make a move as usual loses. And we would like to know if we are given some n and a pile of n chips, who has a winning strategy and who doesn't. The key observation here is that if g is this game, then the position x, y is the same as x, y in the sum of e of g and itself. Indeed, we every move we make with the first pile we could just make in the first instance of the game, and every move we do with the second pile we can do with y in the second instance of the game. Therefore, g of x, y is the same as g of x, x or g of y where g is the Sprague-Grandi function for capital G. Using these observations, we may notice that the Sprague-Grandi function for this game can be defined like this, so it's g of x is equal to max of g of y x or g of z such that x and sorry y and z are greater or equal than 1 and y plus z are equal to x and using this formula it's pretty easy to compute several first values of g of x so 0 1 2 3 4 So, 0 is not quite interesting, but it's a terminal position, so the value is 0. 1 is also a terminal position, because you cannot split the pile of 1 pebble into 2, so it's 0. Uh, however, from 2 you can split into 1 and 1, and sort of the value of 1 is 0 and 0, so it's 0. So max of this is 1. 3 can be split into 1 and 2, and the XOR would give you 1. Therefore, max of this is 0. Similarly for 4, it's 1 and 3 or 2 and 2. For 1 and 3, the XOR gives you 0. And for 2 and 2, the XOR would give you also 0 because it's 1 XOR 1. So max of this is 1. Now we can formulate a conjecture that g of x is equal to either 0 or 1 and it's equal to 0 if x is equal to 0 or 
if x is odd and uh, it's one otherwise. Let's prove this using induction. It's the base case is clear because we just computed it. So we need to prove the induction step. So assume the statement is true. For all w less than x. Note that we have two cases. If x is even, then y and z have the same reminder modulo 2. if both of them give the sum equal to x, right? Therefore, g of y is equal to g of z, which would mean that uh, their XOR is 0. And this would mean that Ma um, it's a g of x is a max of the set containing only one element, zero, and it means that g of x is one, exactly like we wanted. If x is odd, and y plus z is equal to x then y and z have different reminders. Modular 2. Which means that one of them has this pregrande value 1 and another one has 0 by the assumption. So g of y, xor g of z, is equal to 0 xor 1, which is 1. Hence, g of x, which is max of 1, would be 0. And this finishes the proof. So, since we proved that g of x, this pregrandy function for our game, is equal to 0 if x is odd, and one otherwise. We essentially prove that the first player loses if the pile has even number of chips. In this short series of videos, we discussed computational games, we defined Sprague-Grandi functions, and we showed how to use the Sprague-Grandi theorem to analyze them. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments or questions, ask them in the comments. See you later.